Well, I always say of myself that I'm a sculptor, and I don't know exactly what that means, but I like the moniker. It's the handling of that material often that I key off of. I always say sticks give me good ideas, and part of that is that just touching them seems to speak of their imminent potential. I get very enthusiastic at that point. How's it going, Elsa? Fine. Is that the fastest tower in the world? I started out because I just simply love the wood. I love trying to see what I could do with the bending of it. I like to try to make different shapes and see if I can make them stand up. But I've enhanced that whole process a bit by including people from the community and also organizations and trying to figure out what makes good public work and how you enliven people's imagination and how you fit work in so that it seems to fit its space. I'm intensely interested in the placement of things and the success of things that are public. I've come to realize that we have a lot of closet stick gatherers out there and uh, not only do they want to gather sticks, they actually want to build things. So we've done really well in having a constant flow of interested parties willing to throw themselves into a lot of work. Hey, John, how are you doing up there? We start off weaving a basic spider web structure that, you know, just very random weave, and then you can fill the walls, you can wrap the doors, whip stitch the top, make the fritz on the top. Oh, you looking good up there. Patrick says that everyone can be a stick worker, but there's definitely some people that, <laughs> that are better than others. Yeah, these things are green, and so they have to be green. They can't be too, uh, can't be too dry. Uh, willow is a great one for basket making, and so I use that a lot if it's available. Maples up and down the east coast. In Florida, you have to use one thing. If you're in Hawaii, you might use another, you use strawberry guava. Out in the northwest, you might use a vine maple or alder. The Midwest has got a lot of elms, Chinese elms and Russian elm, and a lot of these things they just hate. Where do you get sticks? Well, you often get them where the bulldozers have taken the big trees down and they're waiting for the box store and these little saplings have come back up. We've gathered behind sewage treatment plants, behind the high school stadium, down along the river. I've learned that if you want to know who owns a piece of property, just take a running chainsaw and sit it on the ground. Someone will be there immediately. <laughs> I was in the military in Germany. The Army Art and Craft Program was fantastic. I repaired antiques, I soldered, I was able to weld. I was just really able to immerse myself every night for three years in the ideas of making things and using different kinds of materials. After being in the service, I forced myself to go back to school using the GI Bill and spent two years in the UNC Art Lab and really started to ask myself what sculpture was, what art was, and decided I really, in fact, would become a sculptor. The second phase beyond making a structural weave is to try to aestheticize the surface. In other words, I, I'm kind of building a canvas and then drawing on it. Sticks are tapered, so when you organize all your tapers in one direction, you get a sense of movement from it. Little looping lines lift the whole weight of the tower. If you have things that are very flat on the ground, it sits things very heavily. So I try to make these little lines on the bottom that look like they're swooping up. Hey, how you doing, boy? Everybody nice to see you. One of the things we've done is been nice to people as they come around, so we're embedding this piece in the community now. We hope that because we've been nice, people will like it better and they'll protect it and uh, see it as part of their own environment. Everybody that walked by, and I mean literally everybody, he would chat with, he'd invite them in, he'd stop and talk to them. And I asked him about it, and he said that he felt he needed to make friends for the sculpture and that it wouldn't be protected once he was gone, and he wanted people to love it as he did. If you make something that's too abstract in certain sites, it might seem uninteresting. So this was a place where I felt like that if I made something that looked like an object or something that you could relate to as kind of a shadow building of some sort, uh, you know, nature configuring itself as a, as a pantheon. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I was influenced by being in Washington lately and working at the Renwick. 
because everything in the entire Washington area is based on the Pantheon, and so it must have been uh, infiltrating into my mind. Renovating the Renoir Gallery in 2015 was an opportunity to remind ourselves why this building was put here in the first place. In a sense, every museum exists as a potential for you to have an experience of wonder, as a place where you may go to commune with art, and where, if you're so lucky, you might even be carried away in the moment. At the Renwick, we have a series of seven big pieces that are very amorphous in a way, and they fling themselves up against the wall or they roll across the surface, but it allows the viewer to go inside and then creep around the back, to then go in another one and make their way from one side of the room all the way to the other. As you walk through the exhibition, you'll see different kinds of installations. Some of them will remain, but some of them won't. Patrick Doherty's installation and John Grady's installation will eventually go away. This ephemeral quality really dovetails nicely with some of the evolution of the field of American craft, where focus has changed from craft as a noun, where we're thinking about craft as specific objects that exist over long periods of time, to craft as a verb, the act of doing something a certain way. When you ask artists to weigh in on what it means to be amazed by the world out there, it says something about where we are as a culture and as a world that they've gravitated towards that sense of nature as our most critical resource. By bringing nature into the museum as a subject, they are reminding us of the value of what is being lost, and they are giving us an opportunity to reflect on what is most at risk in our world. I see my work as being propelled by people's concern about the environment. We've come to the realization that each of us is not trying to do anything wrong, but as a whole, we've started having a, a real impact. I think that my work has filled a space in there where there's some visual relief, there's a kind of nostalgia to some degree, but in a real way, it's a touchstone for the things we care about in the natural world. It reminds us of animal life. It reminds us of simple shelter. It reminds us of simpler times when we seem to be more in touch with the environment. And I think my work comes into play. It finds an audience on the cusp of some of these concerns. I've worked about eight different pieces with Patrick, and there's something about every piece that strikes you that the other one didn't. This piece is the archway's dome with the ceiling in it. It's always a special something that grabs the eye. People like to add sticks. They like to take them out. They like to take them out and put them back in somewhere else. It will never look as good as today. I think it's sort of an organic thing, and eventually it does have a life, and it's temporary, just like any tree in the forest is, is going to not last forever. It's not real unless you can reach over and touch it. And so I've tried to make work that has no barrier. Taking it into a place where somebody can grab hold of it, can push it, can feel its properties, can really experience it. It's much more fruitful and it's much more compelling, allowing people to interact with them fully and get a sense of what it is. I'm a seventh generation Orange County native. I actually live not far from the plantation my family was originally on. Be able to combine art and nature and my roots, it's an amazing thing. I want to continue to make Orange County great and seeing things today like stick work, this is just something that adds icing to the cake. When I finish the sculpture, I'm kind of redundant. I feel like there's an equation there, that it's my job to build something exciting, and then I turn it over to the public, and it's their job to see what they think.